Oh my god, you guys, I am so excited for this road trip. First stop, in and out Yes, queen, and don't forget Starbucks. You guys go ahead, but I got my own food. Want some? Yeah, I was that girl. The girl who picks the cheapest item on the menu at a fancy restaurant. The girl who heads straight to the clearance section in a store. The girl who packs her bag full of a bunch of different snacks right before entering the movie theater just to save a few bucks. And as previous videos show, I am still pretty cheap and stingy, especially since I work for myself. But if you think this is bad, you should see the 22-year-old Harshi bar living in San Francisco. And yes, San Francisco is one of the most expensive cities to live in in the US. And I was making a pretty comfortable salary working as a software engineer. But even then, I took penny pinching to a whole new level. Or at least that's what I tried. Let me explain. So let's take a trip back to well, simpler times, to 2018. It was the summer before starting my job and I had just traveled back home from college graduation. I had no summer job and no real hobbies, so I became the child that every parent dreads, a couch potato. <laughs> In my very few moments of inspiration, I set my sights on learning more about personal finance. Random, I know. I read countless blog posts, how-to articles, and watched YouTube videos from nearly every personal finance guru on the internet. And everywhere I turned, I read about this 50-30-20 rule, which is a basic guideline for how to divide up your income. Simply put, you put 50% towards your needs, things like rent, utilities, and groceries. Another 20% goes towards savings, retirement funds, and paying off debt. And the last 30% is for wants. In my case, impromptu boba trips, late night chicken biryani, and impulsive Amazon buys. So with this as a baseline, I headed to Google Docs and made a budget of my own. And yeah, ignore that rent part. Let's instead move past that to my wants section. Take a look at this and let me know down below. How realistic do you think this budget is? And now that you've seen my budget, you may have noticed that there were a few limiting factors that I didn't consider. In fact, three to be precise. So one thing they don't tell you about working full time is how little time you'll actually have. On a typical work day, I'd be out the door by 8 a.m. to embark on my one hour pilgrimage to my office, pushing through tourists to get to the subway, standing in line for the free bus, and climbing through mud, shrubbery and rocks to get to my office in time for breakfast. Then after 10 hours of work and the gym and my commute back, I'd be home by 9 p.m. So this would leave me only two hours to properly decompress. So in that time, I was supposed to prepare dinner or meal prep or run errands, all the things needed to actually stick to my budget. Now, the second limiting factor is social life. And I know what you're thinking, what social life, Harshibar? Well, when I did decide on stepping out of my cave and interacting with other human beings, again, my budget will come in the way. And luckily, or I guess unluckily, for me, everything that I was invited to or wanted to do involved food. And when there's food, I black out and just say yes. <laughs> And these outings usually costed me at least $50, starting with a morning coffee, then a nice meal at some restaurant, then maybe some boba, and then some dessert. Don't forget all the Uber rides. Yeah, <laughs> that was not good. And the last limiting factor was my own sanity. And I wanna take you back to my first day living in San Francisco. And let me paint the scene here a little bit. I had just stayed up all night long packing for this trip and had just landed off a rather long flight to SF. And I was standing there in the baggage carousel with my luggage faced with a decision. Do I take an Uber to my place for $25 or do I take the local train for $10? And yeah, you guessed it, I took the train. 
And an hour later, there I was in one of the busiest, most touristy intersections of San Francisco. And every few steps I took, either a suitcase would flip over, or I would trip over a suitcase, or one of my bags would go rolling down the hill, or all the above. And the point of the story is to show that that $15 that I saved was not, I repeat, it was not worth it. It was not worth the embarrassment of having all these tourists gawk at me as I fumbled up this hill. It wasn't worth the physical exhaustion of carrying 100 pounds of luggage. And it wasn't worth the frustration that carried on well through the rest of the day. There were so many times when I would take the more difficult route and make things harder for myself just to save a few bucks. But that came at the cost of my own energy or my mood or my time, which is not worth it. So yeah, if you can't tell, my budget didn't stand a chance. If I stuck to it, I would be tired and angry and antisocial. And if I didn't, I'd still be angry, but I'd also be disappointed in myself for wasting money. So it was a lose-lose. Of course, I didn't go wild with my spending, but the entire purpose of this exercise of making a budget was pretty much out the window. After many more iterations of this budget, I learned the hard way that it's actually better to overestimate your spending instead of the other way around. Because life doesn't always go as you plan and there's always going to be surprises thrown your way. We know that a lot from this year. Because of that, giving yourself some extra wiggle room if you can is really helpful in establishing some peace of mind. And this is something that doesn't only apply to budgeting. It boils down to the general idea of under promise, over deliver. So by setting expectations low, the moment that you surpass them, everyone is surprised and the rewards are immediate serving as momentum to keep going and keep improving yourself. Think about the workplace. When you set expectations too high, as I often did as an engineer, you may fail to meet them. And then your boss may wonder why you always seem behind, which can hamper possible growth opportunities. But if you promise less and go above and beyond, everyone will be surprised and will throw more opportunities your way. Or say I want to start reading. If I tell myself I'm going to read a book every single day, then the moment that routine starts to slip up and I miss a day, I might start getting lazy, eventually give up, and then feel more down because of that. But if I say I'll read at least three days a week, I can achieve that goal much more easily. And when I do, I'll feel good and I'll want to keep going and pushing myself. When I was a kid or even in school, I took my time for granted. But now that I'm a little bit older, have a few more gray hairs, I realize how valuable time really is. Because once it's gone, you can't get it back. This is something that Naval Ravikant, the founder of AngelList and an investor, touched on in one of his podcasts. He said, no one is going to value your time more than you. Set a high personal hourly rate and stick to it. What this means is that even if you're not some big shot multimillionaire, your time still should have some quantifiable value. So say I value my time at $100 an hour. Now when faced with a decision like taking an Uber over a train, I should think about the time or the money that I'm losing. A 30 minute slower commute means I'm effectively throwing away $50. So now if I have an option to make something more efficient or save myself some time or hassle, I'll invest in that because that really is investing in myself and my own success. And when it comes to money, I am no finance guru and I don't have a million dollar house or a Tesla to brag about. But all I can say from my experience is to one, save as much as you can, especially when you're young and have fewer responsibilities. But at the same time, don't let that stop you from prioritizing your own time, 
happiness and mental health in favor of saving just a dollar here or there. And yeah, that's it for today's video. I know that for me, I wish I learned a lot more about personal finance when I was in school. So I'd love to learn from you guys your experience with budgeting or just your general tips about managing money. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I'll see ya in the next one. Yes, queen. Is this on? You wanna smile for the camera?